Hello, my name is Michael Katz. I've been practicing franchise law since 1979, and I represent franchisors and franchisees from around the world. I'm also a contributing editor of the Franchise Bible, published by Entrepreneur Press. This lesson will be a short history of franchising and how it's grown into one of the most successful business models in the history of the United States, while also being one of the most regulated. First, let's remember the definition of a franchise, which is a contract between two or more parties where the franchisor grants the franchisee the right to use the franchisor's marks and system under significant direction and control of the franchisor for a fee. It's believed that the modern version of this relationship first arose in the 1850s with Singer Sewing. They taught thousands of people how to use its name to sell sewing machines using marketing methods that they defined. Indeed, it was Singer that invented the buy over time concept, where a person of meager income could buy the machine over time while improving their lot in life. In the 50s, companies such as McDonald's began to exploit the concept, but it was the 60s and 70s that saw the first explosion of franchise businesses. Unfortunately, as is often the case, a good thing was hijacked by liars, cheats, and charlatans. They fabricated stories of great wealth that could be obtained by buying their particular brand of snake oil. Some of us remember ads in the newspapers and radios that promised the unwary buyer that he or she could earn thousands of dollars a day with little or no work. I remember one ad that promised the buyer that he could make $8,000 overnight. I couldn't resist. I called and found out that all I had to do was send them $850 for the book that was guaranteed to make me rich. Too good to be true? Absolutely. By the way, I never sent the money. It was California that reacted to these scams by passing the comprehensive law to protect its citizens. The California law was followed in 1979 by the Federal Trade Commission that created a law that mirrored the securities disclosure requirements of the time. Called the Uniform Franchise Offering Circular, or the UFOC, the most carefully pronounced acronym in federal law. Every franchisor that sold franchises in the United States was required to adhere to the strict question and answer format that was divided into 23 items. In, in 2008, the FTC overhauled the UFOC and took the opportunity to change the name to the Uniform Franchise Disclosure Document, or FDD. Gone was the chance for folks like me to make a great joke. It's now the FTC that regulates franchising around the country along with some 19 states, each of whom have laws affecting the franchise relationship. Why do we care? Though folks sometimes complain about the length and complexity of the FDD law, the fact is it's helped millions of citizens understand the proposed franchise relationship that he or she is reviewing and permits those same people to compare one opportunity with another through the use of a uniform method of disclosure. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the history of franchising so you can better understand why it's so highly regulated today. I'm Michael Katz. Thanks for watching.